thank you so much uh, at the outset uh, let me thank you dr vijay for the invitation uh, in this wonderful high powered uh, national seminar i was uh, present uh, in the inaugural program also and uh, i could had the opportunity to listen to some of the eminent speakers on the subject and thank you once again and let me put across uh, my views on the subject uh, one of the most uh, relevant topics uh, of today see we all are passing through uh, this pandemic and this is unprecedented time for all of us for men as well as equally for the women as well and there are challenges as rightly said in the inaugural speech there are challenges in terms of employment there are laying off furloughs salary cut there is no job in the market so this is a peculiar time and we all are going through this difficult time having said that if we talk about women empowerment let me talk something in general we all are talking about equality equity and reality we cannot ensure equality for everyone but definitely we can ensure equity i think given the similar kind of platforms to everyone to all the human beings to that matter it's not only the men but also to the women as well women empowerment since the no it is a hot topic and since the me too campaign the twitter campaign it has got a focal point for all the government to address in india especially the women empowerment is no gender equality in fact is enshrined in the indian constitution in its preamble fundamental rights and fundamental duties and directive principles the constitution not only grants equality to women but also empowered the state to adopt measures of positive discrimination in favor of women so whenever we talk about the women empowerment many of us in general we confuse the concept of empowerment let me put it across in the word of sadguru what he said rightly if we expect that a man to perform a woman's job okay it's not no possible on the similar way a woman also cannot perform a man's job or replace a man i think on and above this is humanity so humanity should not be divided into two different species men and women all have the equal opportunity but having said that if you look back at the history history shows us that most of the times when the foreign invaders when the foreign invaders they invaded what happened that time most of the times they used to you no know, attack the women and because of that particular difficulties we used to hide the women and that's where it all started that women always take the back stage but having said that i think today if you look at today if you look at the world we see that women are equally competent and they are also playing greater role in the world in all walks of life let's example some of the top eminent women leaders the prime minister of new zealand one of the top leaders the sheikh hasina the prime minister of bangladesh and we had our own prime minister honorable late indira gandhi ji who was very well known and of great caliber highly acknowledged across the world for her leadership qualities having said that i think it is necessary for all of us to understand that empowerment should not be linked to any kind of biological aspects too much talking about empowerment connected with a particular gender it should not lead to any kind of biological discrimination we all are human being and we all have different purposes 
in our lives. We all are creation of the God. Women symbolizes beauty. They symbolizes the motherhood. They do lot of, as rightly said in the inaugural speech, that women do take care of the household. They are not housewife. They are the homemakers. I think, which is the toughest job. They are the backbone of the society. That's what it is rightly said. If we educate one girl, we educate ten generations. Having said that, today if we look at, I think there are a lot of laws, there are a lot of protections given by the constitution in each country to protect the rights of the women and to ensure the level playing ground. And today, women are doing wonderful. They are taking the leadership role. But having said that, the women representation in the workforce. There are different studies. Had rightly said, there is a study by the World Bank. It says that the labor force participation in India for the women is 27 percent against 31 percent in Bangladesh, 61 percent in China, 51 percent in Myanmar, 57 percent in the UK, 55 percent in the US. And if you look at the CEO level, the board level representation is around. 16%. I think we need more representations of the women in the decision-making role. We should not compare it with an economic activity. See, the problem comes when we connect the gender disparity with the economic activity. Today, women are empowered. They are playing different role today and leadership role. In fact, the World Bank again in another study. It says that some of the countries which are best known for the gender equality and people say that if a woman want to leave, please go to Belgium, Denmark, France, Latvia. Those are the countries where gender equality is highly appreciated by the World Bank. So as we are passing through the difficult time and rightly said, the SMEs are not doing well. And entrepreneurs, not only the women, even the main entrepreneurs are struggling. The Indian government has injected 25 lakh crore rupees to revive the economy and some percentage of it to support the SME sector. As in the keynote address, it is rightly said that there must be some specific allocation due to the COVID-19 impact especially for the women entrepreneurs so that we can support and i'm sure that government is looking at it this is a very tough situation when everyone is locked down at home i think there is a lot of disturbances it reported in the newspaper also lot of stress lot of no challenges in conjugal relationships when kids husband wives all are locked up at home it has given a different dimensions altogether. And I'm sure this particular conference will open up new ideas and new thoughts and how give the leads to the government and different policy making bodies what is to be done in support of or in support or to overcome this particular difficult situation. As it is rightly said. I think the representations of the women needs to be encouraged. And in India, we have multiple laws to ensure the women empowerment and their protection. We have the Immoral Traffic Prevention Act of 1956. Similar line, if we look back in the past, there is Dowry Prohibition Act 1961. The Indecent Representation of the Women Prohibition Act. 1986, the Commission of Sati Prevention Act 1987, the Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace Prevention Prohibition and Readdressal Act 2013. So there are a lot of laws are there to protect the interest of the women to ensure that they also get the level playing ground to showcase their abilities, their skill sets and come out successfully in life.
there are some women related legislation the indian penal code 1860 and the indian evidence act 1872 so a lot of legislations to support the women to ensure their safety and their security even in the parliament we have that 30 percent of the members must be from the women so a lot of initiatives are taken having said that but still there are some inherent challenges for the women to come up so in the rural india we have seen to support the rural entrepreneurs especially the women entrepreneurs there is a mudra loan government has given exclusively for the women to support them to come up successfully to start their own enterprise i think the government needs to come out with lot of other mechanisms and lot of other support system to ensure that women comes out successfully as we are passing through this difficult time this has given unique challenges we never seen before we have seen this particular covid-19 situation has proven the models which were so successful before all the models are flop failed miserably during this time capitalism once it was thought that most successful model to motivate business or to entrepreneurial activities but today we see even if we look at us there is 6 trillion dollar investment by the government to revive the economy all economies around the world they have injected huge fund to revive so there is greater responsibility of the government and the welfare economy it has also proven ratan tata has said the employees those who are working for so long for the companies to ensure company does well to ensure its productivity goes up but today this last 5 months and for next 5 to 6 months we see that many companies have forced laid off they have given furloughs salaried cut and ratan tata says these are unethical we have to support the employees because they are the people for them today we are what we are but we cannot be sustainable for last 5 months then what we are doing it for so many years in the market it has also proven that business model what the companies are working for last so many years does that not work all the companies are going for digital transformation today the craig smith the president of microsoft has rightly said that there will be millions of jobs center for monitoring indian economy recently they have published a report and they said that 17 million job loss in india itself is a huge job loss and it will take another 5 to 6 years to bounce back to the normalcy so in this difficult time i think state has a major role to play to ensure that sme sector does well to ensure that equal opportunities are given to all the people not only to the men but especially to the women the social reengineering especially what is happening during this pandemic i think means those who are at home and we have seen in various reports that they have also come forward to share their household activities with their better half i think a lot of changes are happening at this time and it is a right intervention by hosting a high powered national conference with eminent speakers to deliberate their views on women empowerment and equality with un 75 and we know that the un sustainable development goal 2030 okay there is one aspect is on gender equality how we can ensure gender equality and for a better world okay for prosperity of humanity this is a need and i'm sure that today's deliberation will open up and enlighten all of us with new thoughts new views and also i came to know there are paper presentations also so definitely that would be a huge resource for the policy making bodies 
and the NGOs, especially the deeds, those who are working in this particular uh, space of women empowerment. And thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity extended uh, to me, especially Dr. Vijay, uh, to express my uh, views on an important uh, uh, issue, which everyone is talking about. And I pray to God that uh, all the very best uh, to deeds for doing wonderful work. And especially we don't find you know, a lot of activities, a lot of people are doing the selfless work in this particular space. And this is the right intervention. And I'm sure you know, from MTC Global, uh, whatever support we can extend to the deed society for the wonderful work and Dr. Vijay is leading, definitely we'll join hands in the coming days and we'll try to contribute a little bit. Thank you so much, Dr. Vijay, for the wonderful opportunity. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much.